Hi everyone, welcome back to the Little Green Pasture. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad to be here. I'm thinking of that first, oh give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Amen. I'm glad that everything about him endures forever. And I can't wait for that forever to be in that enduring city with our enduring Christ and the enduring saints and enduring light in that spectacular enduring city. I can't wait. Well, praise the Lord. I'm going to pray and I'm going to begin. Father in heaven, I love you so much and I thank you so much for the living waters that flow down from Jesus Christ, from you into our cups, Lord, and I pray you let them overflow. For Lord, you are the fullness of the Godhead bodily and everything you do flows over like the Jordan whose banks overflowed at the time of harvest and how everything about you overflows. You always give more than what everybody asks you for. You will do exceeding abundantly beyond all that we ask according to the power that works in us, but according to that power in us is you. So Lord, be with my mouth and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my God, my King and my God. For your name's sake, Jesus. Amen. Don't you just love those quiet times where you're reading the word and Unexpectedly, you see something and you just let you, 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 there's like a tributary there and the water starts flowing. And if you're anything like me, I'm thirsty in the morning. I'm ready for a good, a good meal with Christ. I'm listening to the voice of the great shepherd. And I was reading today in Mark chapter 7, 25 through 30 about the Syrophoenician woman who had a demon possessed daughter. We're all familiar with that story, but there's one word that stuck out to me and I want to share it. So it starts out for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Greek, a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. But Jesus said unto her, let the children first be filled, for it is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it unto the dogs. And she answered and said unto him, Yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And he said unto her, For the saying, Go thy way. The devil is gone out of thy daughter. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. And her daughter laid upon the bed. Thank you, Lord. For that day you did that. But the word stuck out to me. Crumbs. And I thought, here's this woman. We know the narrative. She's not a Jew. She's considered a dog which is the worst kind of thing to be considered. But she didn't care. You know why? Because love was in view. It was sat really sacrificial what she was doing, especially also being a woman, a woman dog. But she had a child that was tormented. And if you're a parent and you see your child tormented anyway, it's more than you could take. But she had heard of him. And before this, a couple scriptures up, he was in a house. She had to go into that house, whose ever house that was. She went in. And it was all men. I could just picture it. An exhausted, 
heartbroken, shattered mother. Just exhausted and desperate. And to throw, like, I don't care if they hate me and they think I'm a dog. I don't care what they think I am. But there's someone in there. I heard of him. I heard stories of how he has cast demons out of people and healed lunatics and made the dumb to speak and the blind to see and the deaf to hear. Oh, I heard about him. And she went in, doesn't say she went in boldly, didn't say anything in another gospel. It says that the disciples said to him, Lord, tell her to leave us for she crieth after us. But Jesus says, uh, he spoke to her and there was no more us. It was just him and her. So you get the, you get the picture of what that must have been like for her. And she was going to go in there and all these men are like, what do you want? And then going to the Lord, get rid of her. Look how she's crying after us. They got it all wrong. She wasn't crying after them. It said she heard of him. She went to go see him. And so he spoke to her and he said those same words. She said, she told him what was going on with her daughter. And he, and he basically called her a dog, but he wasn't mean. She knew they were dogs. It wasn't news to her. It wasn't like all of a sudden she's being called a dog. The Jews referred to the Syrophoenician nation as dogs, Gentiles, the worst kind of people. And Jesus says to her, let the children first be filled, for it's not meat to take the children's bread. The children's bread and to cast it unto the dogs. But I love how she said to him, yes, Lord. And I think to myself, look at those words. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Our words should always be yes, Lord. No matter what he says to us. Yes, Lord. I agree. I'm a dog. But I'm a shattered, broken woman with a tormented child that can never rest. And she says, dogs eat the crumbs. I'll take a crumb. I'm here. I'll take a crumb. In other words, she's saying, give me a crumb. Because I believe every account that's written in that Bible is the account of the acts of the Holy Spirit. I believe with all my heart that the power of the Holy Spirit was moving upon that woman and gave her that boldness. And in that moment when she answered the Savior of the world, not knowing he would be the Savior of the world, but she was talking to the Savior of the world. She was talking to God manifest in the flesh and said, yes, Lord. Yet the dogs under the table eat of the children's crumbs. And his reply was for this saying, go thy way, thy devil has gone out of thy daughter. And she goes home and there's peace in her home. Her daughter is laying in bed. And that position of being in bed means she was at peace. The devil has gone out. And I saw there's something deeper here. You see, Jesus came first for the Jew and then for the Gentile later on. In other words, he's, he's fulfilled that in his death burial and resurrection for now he's saying look you're not going to eat under my table you're going to sit at my table and you're not going to eat crumbs but you're going to eat to your full of my life the bread of life and be satisfied you know i think of so many big shot religious leaders and speakers they would be the first ones to say you're not sitting at our table just send a check 
or if you have to sit with us, sit under the table. I remember I was invited to a conference not that long ago. I guess it was about three years ago. And, <clears throat> and I went and it was complimentary. And then when we went in, um, before I went, my friend said to me, oh, by the way, she helped me to go there. Um, she invited me. She was supposed to go and didn't go. No, she wasn't supposed to go, but she knew people and so forth and so on. And it turned out that we were to go and there was a person she wanted us to meet. And that was really the only reason we went there. It wasn't to hear anybody speak. I'm not a conference person, but she wanted us to meet a certain person, perhaps, you know, connect with this person and so forth. And we did meet the person. He was a very nice gentleman and so on. But one of the things that she said to me, she goes, oh, and by the way, um, uh, the person you're going to meet is uh, going to be, uh, well, you're invited to eat with the speakers and all the people who paid extra can eat with the speakers during lunch break. So you get to go into the room where all the speakers are and the people that paid extra to eat with them. And, you know, I'll tell you something. And that was lovely on her part, you know, so that has nothing to do with her. But, you know, it felt like a lead brick sunk into my stomach. And I thought, I thought of the Pharisees saying, what are you doing here in Matthew's house? Eating with sinners, drunkards with the filth. Jesus doesn't have special seats in the synagogue. He didn't even sit in Moses' seat. He didn't have to. Moses spake of him, prophesied of him. Jesus doesn't have anything of us that he wants, but he invites us to come and sit at his table and to dine with him and to have fellowship with him. Like when he said to Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus, come down. I must needs this day be at thy house. And he went into his house and salvation that day came to his house and to many other houses after that, because Zacchaeus gave back everybody money that he took illegally from them. He stole. So see, Jesus will come into your house. And he'll sit at your table and he will eat with you and he will dine with you and he's not going to feed you crumbs. But I believe when I saw that word crumbs in that moment, I believe the power was at its peak with the Holy Spirit where she saw something so much as like that of a grain of a mustard seed, which is smallest in the of the seed kingdom. Yet it groweth and it becometh a tree. Such is the kingdom of God. It overtakes, it becomes the biggest tree in the garden. And she saw, I'll take a crumb because any crumb that comes from you is all power to cast demons out of people and to make prisoners free. And the recovery of sight of them that are blind. And it makes lame people walk and leap like a heart and follow you skipping with joy. Oh, I heard of him. I heard that he took a man out of town and he spat on the, he spat and he put it on his tongue and the string of his tongue was loose and he began to speak. Oh, I heard of him. I heard how he went into the home of a, of a J. Iris, the high priest. That man wouldn't even look my way because I'm a dog. But I heard that man, Jesus, made his little daughter of 12 years old alive. He can make mine alive too. Though I know we're dogs. And I believe there's no proof that Syrophoenician woman received Jesus Christ as Savior after his death and burial and resurrection. Her daughter, too, because they tasted of the Lord, how good he is. And she followed him. And she sits at his table now with her daughter. I want the crumbs, do you? I'll take a crumb. 
I'll take a crumb. I'll take that crumb of power because that crumb of power is a crumb of power of God's love to cast the enemy out of your life, to cast the enemy out of your children's life and to cast the devil and all of his wicked works out of your home. The contentions and strife will cease. That the Lord will clear out your home and your life and you will spiritually be found laying on your bed with the devil gone out for a crumb and not even really for the crumb but for the same because she bore witness of that crumb of power i'm a dog but i'll take that crumb Praise the Lord for that living bread that a man may eat thereof and never die again. That will pass from death into life. Amen. Praise the Lord for his crumbs and for the whole loaf of his body. I pray this word is really spoken to you. Because Jesus always is working to bring you and your children and your family, and even if you're alone, peace. The peace that passes all understanding and the gift that no man can take from you. It's yours forever and the very person of Christ. Praise the Lord for that Syrophoenician woman. I want to stand with her and say, Lord, I'll take a crumb. I'll raise my hand high. I'll stretch it all the way to heaven and say, I want the crumb. I want the crumb. And that also means that we become the children of the highest that sit at his table and partake of the living bread forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace for his namesake.